in the dense woods of Hemlock Forest, a group of five friends set out for what was supposed to be an unforgettable weekend camping trip, eager to escape the hustle and bustle of city life. They found solace in the idea of spending nights under the stars, surrounded by the untouched beauty of nature. Little did they know their adventure would soon turn into a nightmare they couldn't wake up from. Upon arriving, they quickly set up their camp near a serene lake, the water mirroring the sky in a perfect display of tranquility. As the sun began to set, casting an orange glow over the forest, they gathered around the fire, sharing stories and laughs blissfully unaware of the darkness creeping in around them. The first sign that something was amiss came with the howling wind. It wasn't the gentle breeze they had welcomed during the day. This was different, almost as if the forest itself was moaning in distress, ignoring the unease that settled in their stomachs. They attributed it to the natural sounds of the wilderness at night. As the hours passed, the group decided to turn in for the night. The fatigue from the day's activities weighing heavily on their eyelids. They crawled into their tents, the sounds of the night acting as a lullaby. But just as sleep began to claim them, a sudden sharp noise pierced the night air. A snap of a twig, so close yet unseen, in the cloak of the forest's darkness. Frozen in fear, they listened as the sounds continued. A soft, dragging noise followed by another snap. Whispers among them started, questioning if they were truly alone in the woods. The bravest of the group, Alex, decided to investigate, believing it to be nothing more than a small animal curious about their camp. Armed with nothing but a flashlight, Alex stepped out into the night. The beam of light cut through the darkness, revealing nothing but the dense trees and underbrush. Moving closer to where the sounds had originated, Alex's heart raced with every step, the isolation of the forest feeling more oppressive than ever. Suddenly, the flashlight flickered, casting shadows that danced menacingly around him. In that moment of darkness, a chilling whisper brushed against his ear. Words indistinguishable, but the threat unmistakably clear. Panicked, Alex turned to run back to the campsite, but stopped dead in his tracks. The campsite was gone. In its place stood an old, decrepit cabin, its windows dark, the door slightly ajar, creaking in the wind. The air grew colder, a sense of dread enveloping Alex as the realization hit him. They were not alone, and something, or someone, was watching from the shadows. Back at the campsite, the others emerged from their tents, alerted by Alex's absence, calling out for their friend received no answer but the mocking echo of their own voices. As they gathered to search, a thick fog rolled in, obscuring their vision and sense of direction. Unbeknownst to them, their nightmare had only just begun. The forest held secrets, ancient and malevolent, waiting in the dark to be awakened. And as they ventured deeper into the unknown, line between reality and fear blurred, leaving them to question everything they thought they knew. The story pauses here. The fate of the friends and the mysteries of Hemlock Forest hanging in the balance, waiting to be continued. Part 1. Under the canopy of endless stars, five friends decided to break the monotony of their city lives with a camping trip to the remote and dense forests of Harper's Creek.
known for its breathtaking views and unsettling silence. It was the perfect escape. They set up camp near a gently flowing creek, its soft gurgles harmonizing with the crackling fire. As the night deepened, their laughter and stories filled the air, unaware of the eyes that watched from the darkness. The forest around them was alive with nocturnal whispers, but one story, told by the flickering light of the fire, chilled them to the bone. It was about the old Harper family, who once lived deep in these woods, isolated from the world. One winter, they vanished without a trace, leaving behind an abandoned cabin and rumors of a curse. They laughed off the story, attributing it to Jake's talent for spinning tales. Yet, as they retired to their tents, an uneasy feeling settled over the campsite. In the dead of night, a sharp, chilling scream pierced the silence, jolting everyone awake. Heart racing, they called out to each other, finding comfort in the sound of familiar voices. The scream, they reasoned, must have been an animal, perhaps a fox or a mountain lion. But as they settled back into their sleeping bags, the sound of soft, deliberate footsteps crunching on the forest floor made their hearts stop. They were not alone. Gathering their courage, they decided to investigate. With flashlights in hand, they moved towards the source of the sounds, only to find footprints that were unmistakably human, leading towards the old Harper cabin. Long forgotten, swallowed by the woods. The door, hanging off its hinges, creaked in the gentle night breeze, beckoning them inside. As they crossed the threshold, the air grew cold, and the faint smell of decay filled their nostrils. The cabin was a time capsule, with belongings scattered as if its occupants had vanished in the middle of their daily lives. Photographs of the Harper family hung on the walls, their eyes seeming to follow every move. Part two. Driven by a mixture of fear and curiosity, the group explored the cabin. The living room was dominated by a large stone fireplace, its ashes long cold. Jake, ever the brave one, suggested they search for clues about the Harper family's disappearance. As they sifted through old newspapers and dusty journals, they discovered a diary belonging to Sarah Harper. The entries were mundane at first, detailing their simple life in the woods. But as they neared the last written page, the tone shifted to one of dread and fear. Sarah wrote of strange noises in the night, a feeling watched, and of her husband venturing into the woods, determined to confront whatever lurked in the shadows. He never returned. The entries ended abruptly, leaving their fate a mystery. The friends decided it was time to leave, but as they turned to exit, they found the door had shut tight, refusing to budge. Panic set in as they realized they were trapped. The cabin, once merely unsettling, now felt malevolent. The temperature dropped further, their breaths visible in the air, and the soft, whispering voices began. These were not the voices of the living. They spoke in hushed tones, lamenting their fate and warning the friends of something ancient and malevolent that stalked the woods of Harper's Creek. The realization hit them not trapped with something inside the cabin. Instead, something was keeping them there, away from a far more dangerous presence lurking outside.
As they searched for another way out, a faint light caught their attention. It was coming from beneath a loose floorboard. Carefully, they pried it open, revealing a small, hidden cellar. Inside, a collection of old, bizarre artifacts and a map of the forest with certain areas marked in red ink. One area, not far from their campsite, was circled repeatedly, labeled, do not enter. With no other options, they prepared to face whatever awaited them in the forest, as they armed themselves with whatever they could find. The cabin's oppressive atmosphere seemed to tighten around them. A silent warning. They were about to step into the heart of the forest's darkness, into secrets long buried and forgotten. And as they extinguished their last source of light, bracing themselves to open the door by force, a low, mournful howl echoed through the forest, sending shivers down their spines. It was clear that their ordeal was far from over, their questions unanswered, and their safety far from guaranteed. The story of their night at Harper's Creek was only just beginning. Part 3 With determination and fear battling within their hearts, the group managed to force the cabin door open, stepping out into the moonlit night. The forest seemed different now, more menacing, as if the trees themselves were alive, whispering secrets in a language long forgotten. Armed with makeshift weapons and the map discovered in the cabin, they cautiously made their way towards the area marked, do not enter. The howl that had unnerved them earlier seemed to follow constant reminder of the unseen dangers lurking in the shadows. As they navigated the dense underbrush, the forest seemed to close in around them, making their progress painfully slow. The air was thick with an inexplicable sense of dread, and every snapped twig underfoot sounded like a gunshot in the oppressive silence. The marked area on the map was not far, but with every step, the feeling of being watched grew stronger. They couldn't shake off the sensation that something was guiding them, hurting them towards an unknown fate. The ground beneath their feet began to change, becoming softer, muddier as they approached a clearing. The moonlight revealed a shallow depression in the earth filled with stones, arranged in a deliberate pattern. It was a site of old, forgotten rituals. The stones marked with symbols that seemed to writhe under the gaze of the unwary. The air here was colder, charged with an energy that whispered of ancient magic and blood. Suddenly, the ground trembled beneath them. A low rumbling that grew in intensity until the stones themselves seemed to resonate. Panic surged as the realization dawned on them. They were standing in the heart of the forest's darkness, a place of power where the veil between worlds was thin. The howls grew louder, a cacophony of voices that seemed to come from all directions surrounding them. In the chaos, they lost each other each friend, now isolated by the dense fog that rose from the ground, enveloping the clearing. The howls became words, a language not spoken by human tongues, promising salvation for a price. Visions flashed before their eyes, showing them the history of Harper's Creek, the rituals performed by the Harper family to keep an ancient evil at bay and the consequences of their disappearance. Each friend was confronted with their deepest fears and offered a choice by the whispering voices. Join the eternal guardianship of the forest and take up the harper's burden or flee and 
leave the forest to the mercy of the darkness they had unwittingly unleashed. As they struggled with their choices, the forest held its breath, waiting. The fate of Harper's Creek hung in the balance, a story still unfolding, its ending yet unwritten, and deep within the heart of the forest, something ancient stirred awakening gaze fixed upon the friends, ready to claim them or welcome them into its fold. The horror of Harper's Creek was far from over, its secrets buried deep, waiting for the next chapter to be written by those brave or foolish enough to walk its shadowed paths. Part 3. With resolve hardened by fear and curiosity. The friends, led by the dim glow of their flashlights, made their way back through the forest towards the area marked Do Not Enter on the old map. The night air was thick with a fog that seemed to swallow the beam of their lights, making the woods feel even more suffocating. Every rustle in the underbrush every snap of a twig underfoot heightened their sense of dread. The forest, alive with unseen watchers, seemed to close in around them. As they neared the circled area, the atmosphere shifted. The trees here were gnarled and twisted, their branches reaching out like twisted hands. A heavy silence enveloped them, the kind of silence that screams in your ears more oppressive than the soft, whispered warnings of the cabin. Here, the air was colder, charged with a palpable sense of malice. The ground was littered with old, weathered symbols carved into stones. Their meanings lost to time, but their intent unmistakably ominous. Despite the overwhelming fear, they pressed on, drawn by an unspoken agreement their only way out of this nightmare was to confront it. The map led them to a clearing where the fog seemed to gather and swirl around a central point, a gaping hole in the earth that appeared to be an entrance to an underground cavern. The decision to enter was made with no word spoken. Their shared glance was enough. The cavern's mouth yawned wide, an abyss promising answers, or perhaps their doom. As they descended, the air grew colder, and the walls seemed to pulse with a rhythm like a heartbeat, resonating with a low, humming sound that vibrated through their bones. The deeper they went, the more the passage narrowed until they were forced to move in a single file. Ancient paintings adorned the walls, depicting scenes of rituals and offerings to something that was never meant to be worshipped, something that slept beneath the earth. Suddenly, the narrow passage opened into a vast underground chamber, its ceiling lost to darkness. In the center stood an altar and around it, the ground was scorched, as if by intense heat. The air was thick with the scent of sulfur and ash. On the altar lay a book, its pages made of some unrecognizable material, filled with the same symbols they had seen above ground. The moment they approached the altar, the chamber began to tremble. Small stones and dust raining from above a sound, like a whisper, turned into a deafening roar, filled the chamber. Words in a language long forgotten, begging to be heard. The book seemed to call to them, promising answers, yet warning of the price of knowledge. As they reached out to open the ancient tome, a shadow detached itself from the darkness, its form shifting and twisting ever fully revealing itself. It spoke in a voice that seemed to come from the very earth, 
a voice of warning, of sorrow, and of rage. friends stood frozen, caught between the desire to flee and the need to understand. The shadow's words wove a tale of ancient times, of a pact broken and a curse unleashed, of guardians appointed to prevent the awakening of something that slumbered beneath them. Their presence in the forest, it seemed, had disturbed a delicate balance. The ground shook more violently now, cracks appearing in the chamber floor, revealing glimpses of a fiery glow beneath. The reality of their situation dawned on them. They were standing on the precipice of awakening an ancient evil, and the choice of whether to proceed or to try and restore the balance was theirs alone. As they deliberated, the cavern's entrance collapsed, sealing them within. Their path forward was uncertain, the risks immense, but the lure of uncovering the truth, of potentially ending the curse of Harper's Creek, compelled them to consider the shadow's offer to guide them further into the darkness. Their adventure had taken a turn into the realms of ancient secrets and forgotten horrors, and as they stood on the edge of making a decision that could change their lives forever, they realized the story of their night in the woods was far from over. The mystery of the Harper family, the curse, and what lay beneath the forest floor beckoned them deeper into the abyss. Part 4. Amid the Tremors and the ominous glow from beneath. The friends faced a stark realization. They were part of a narrative much older and darker than any of them could have imagined. The shadow's offer hung in the air like a thick mist, challenging them to either delve deeper into the abyss or attempt to escape and possibly seal the fate of Harper's Creek forever. With the cavern entrance now blocked, their choice seemed to be made for them. They would venture further, guided by the mysterious entity that seemed to be both a part of the curse and its reluctant custodian. As they agreed to follow the shadow, it moved ahead, its form less menacing now, more ethereal, as if their acceptance had granted it some peace, the chamber led to a series of narrow passages that descended even further into the earth. The air here was heavy, filled with a palpable sense of history and suffering. The walls, slick with moisture, occasionally revealed more of the ancient symbols, their glow providing the only light in the suffocating darkness. The deeper they went, the more they began to hear sounds other than their own footsteps. Whispers of an ancient language, cries of despair, and the occasional terrifying silence that seemed to speak louder than any words. It was as if the very heart of the earth was recounting tales of eons past, of battles fought to keep something terrible at bay. Eventually, the passage opened into another vast chamber, this one with a ceiling adorned with a mosaic depicting
reflecting the sky, stars, and constellations in positions unfamiliar to any of them. In the center of the chamber stood a stone dais, atop which rested a crystalline object emitting a pulsating light. Surrounding the dais were statues, each carved with exquisite detail to resemble beings neither human nor animal. Their faces twisted in expressions of agony and defiance. The shadow paused here, gesturing towards the crystalline object. The heart of the curse, it whispered, its voice echoing strangely in the chamber. Bound by the ancients, it holds the essence of what was unleashed. Your presence here has awakened it, but you also hold the key to its resealing. The friends looked among themselves, uncertainty and fear evident in their eyes. How could they, mere visitors to these woods, hold the key to something so monumental? The shadow seemed to sense their hesitation. The pact made was with your ancestors, it continued, a lineage long forgotten, but blood remembers. You were drawn here not by chance, but by destiny. As they approached the dais, the chamber began to shake violently, a roar filling the air as if the very earth was protesting their presence. The crystalline object's light grew more intense, its pulsations quicker. The statues seemed to come alive, their expressions morphing into grim warnings. They realized then that they were standing on a precipice not just of danger, but of truth. A truth that connected them to Harper's Creek more deeply than they could have ever imagined. The artifacts, the diary, the ancient ruins, all of it, had been leading them to this moment. One by one, they reached out to the crystal, feeling a surge of energy coursing through them. A connection to the land, the curse, and the shadow that guided them. The chamber's tumultuous shaking and the roaring ceased abruptly, replaced by a heavy silence that felt like the calm before a storm. As they stood there, connected and empowered, understood what needed to be done. The resealing of the heart would require more than just their newfound connection. It would require a sacrifice, a willingness to give a part of themselves to mend the ancient pact. The shadow, now more form than mist, nodded as if it had heard their unspoken agreement. The path ahead is fraught with peril, it intoned. The fate of Harper's Creek, and indeed your own legacies, hang in the balance. The friends, united by destiny and a newfound resolve, prepared to confront the final chapter of their harrowing journey. The crystal began to glow brighter, illuminating pathways previously shrouded in darkness, each leading to unknown challenges and the potential to finally lift the curse of Harper's Creek. As they stepped forward, the statue's expressions changed once more, this time to ones of solemn approval, guardians of a secret that was now partially theirs to bear. The story of their night in the woods, it seemed, was far from over. It was evolving into a tale of courage, of confronting the past, and of a fight not just for their survival, but for the soul of Harper's Creek itself. <laughs>